Hello everybody and let's start with a new chapter today called as Soil Erosion and Conservation. In this chapter we will be talking about what exactly is soil erosion, what are the different ways in which soil gets eroded and how exactly we can conserve soil and prevent soil erosion. The upper layer of earth is made up of soil and soil is so important that it provides minerals for plants to grow. Now when you see what soil is made up of, we see that it is made up of very small particles of broken down rocks, dead and decaying plants and animals, water and air. So these are the components of soil. Apart from all of these, soil even has very tiny living things called as bacteria. So we have to remember soil is not just one thing, but it is made up of so many things. It's made up of small particles of broken down rocks. It's made up of dead and decaying plant and animal matter. It is made up of water, air. Apart from that, it also has tiny living things called as bacteria. So all this is present in soil. Now we know that soil is very important for us. Let us see how exactly we depend on soil. Now if you talk about the importance of soil, first let's talk about how soil is important to plants. If you see plants, soil provides nutrition to plants. This nutrition is going to help the plant grow and make food. In turn, we are depending on this plant food that the plant is making. Now if you see animals, how they are benefited from soil, firstly they find shelter in soil. If you see examples of animals that live in the soil, you know the examples such as rabbits, you know ants live in soil and earthworm lives in soil. So these are examples of animals which find their shelter in soil. Apart from this, we also get products required for building our house from the soil. Like for example, sand, you have bricks, all this is made up of soil, which is got from the earth. So you see how important soil is. Now let us talk about how exactly soil is formed. Now if you see this, when rocks break down into smaller pieces, soil is formed. Okay, so this process is called as a weathering of rocks. This process where soil is formed because of rocks that break down is called as weathering of rocks. There are various reasons why weathering of rocks can happen. It can happen because of animals. It can happen because of roots of plant that go very deep into certain rocks. It can happen because of the rain, because of force of flowing water. As the water is flowing, it cuts across the rocks and goes sometimes because of very harsh winds and various weather changes can lead to the breakdown of rocks into smaller pieces. Now how exactly this happens? Moving water carries rocks. Now you know forceful water can carry anything with it. So when it carries these rocks, they knock against each other. So when they knock against each other, they break into smaller pebbles. Okay, so the, once they break into smaller pebbles, finally you end up with a tiny grain of sand. If I have to show you the picture, first water is going to carry away rocks bit by bit and this bit by bit is going to be converted into pebbles. So rock gets converted into pebbles and pebbles in turn get converted into a tiny grain of sand. So pebbles get converted into a tiny grain of sand. So this is how exactly soil is formed. Now in the next part of the chapter, let us look at soil erosion more in detail and how exactly it is caused. Now when you see soil erosion, the soil on earth is formed when it settles in layers. So soil is formed when it settles in layers. In these layers, the topmost layer is called as the topsoil. You have to remember this very carefully. The topmost layer of the soil is called as topsoil. If you have to see a picture of it, it's right here. If you dig the soil a little, it's very dark and humid, right? That is the topsoil. This topsoil gets mixed with humus and is a fertile part of the soil. What do I mean by this term humus? Humus is nothing but organic matter like dead and decaying plants and waste materials, natural waste, all of this mixed together increases the fertility of the soil because a lot of minerals and vitamins get into soil because of dead and decaying plant and animal matter. If the topsoil is removed by either wind or water, the fertility of this soil is lost and the land becomes barren. What do I mean by barren? Barren means a dry land where plants cannot grow. So 
if this topsoil is removed by the wind or water the fertility of the soil is lost and the land will become barren once it becomes barren it is unfit for farming you can't grow anything on a barren land therefore the definition of soil erosion is the removal of top soil by wind or water is known as soil erosion okay so this would be the definition of soil erosion now that we know what soil erosion means let us look at the various causes of soil erosion so under various causes of soil erosion we will be studying about erosion by water we will be studying erosion by wind and lastly we will be seeing erosion due to human activities the first one is erosion by water as rain water flows on land it takes a part of soil with it so this results in soil erosion now if you can see this picture right here rain is falling because of which all the soil particles will be disturbed and it will start flowing along with water now soil erosion by water is greater in hilly areas you know that in hill when water is flowing downwards it gains speed so as it's gaining speed it will pull more and more sand with it so soil erosion as we see it is greater in a hilly region whereas when you see plains the flow of river slows down because of this slowing down all the soil that it has collected from uphill it will start depositing it at the plains now what happens over the years when these deposits increase rivers will change their course and when rivers change their course it can result in floods and this you know results in heavy loss of life as well as property now we will talk about erosion by wind if you see the first picture here strong winds cause top soil to be blown away especially in areas where there is less vegetation to bind the soil you can see this picture here this soil is carried and goes and deposits at a place where there is less wind speed so wherever there is lot of wind speed all the soil is carried so you can see all the soil is being carried away from this region finally it will go and settle at a place where there is less air speed now soil erosion because of wind is greatest in dry areas especially desert because there is nothing growing there there is nothing to hold on to the soil so it is freely moved around from left right and center so this kind of erosion because of wind is seen greatest in places which are dry for example the deserts Now let's talk about erosion due to human activities. Now roots of plant hold the soil particles together. You can see here in this picture how these roots are holding the soil between them. You can see in this area, this area, it's all holding it on, right? Now let us see how exactly humans are responsible for it. Firstly, we will talk about deforestation. Now when you see deforestation, we've cleared out forests for our sake we start building farmlands we start building cities we start building roads and we also cut down trees for our wooden requirements now if you see this picture here it talks about how manhattan was in 1609 and how manhattan is from 2009 up till today you can see how much of green cover is there back then and how it is completely converted into a city so you can see here itself the exact example of deforestation how a forest land has been converted into a city in other words this leaves the land bare and increases erosion even sometimes plowing leads to soil erosion because it leaves the soil loose so because of this when there is a wind that blows on plowed land all the soil gets taken away so you can see what is deforestation you can see this crane here that is taking wood for our use Now another method in which humans are actually responsible is overgrazing. Now what is overgrazing? We know that we rear cattle for our use, right? And when these cattle go and overgraze, they eat up all the grass and expose the top soil. Now because of this there is an increase in soil erosion. So the two methods in which humans are contributing to soil erosion is by deforestation and overgrazing. Now with this we come to the end of part 1 of this chapter let's do a quick recap of what all we did in today's class so we saw what was soil erosion then we went to the various ways in which soil gets eroded in that first we spoke about soil erosion by water then we spoke about soil erosion by wind 
thirdly we spoke about soil erosion by human activities now under this human activities like deforestation and overgrazing are responsible for soil erosion so with this we come to the end of part 1 of soil erosion in the next part we will discuss how we can conserve soil so if you have any doubts in this part please get back to us and we will surely answer all your doubts thank you